so many people are concerned about saving on taxes mm -hmm. that they don't have. Who am I to charge, to charge somebody ten thousand right. dollars to work with me? I gotta focus on just building things in place, businesses and uh, properties and things like that, to make sure that I'm good because I have I, I, I became accustomed to a certain lifestyle. You are the queen of the tax code. Absolutely. I'm the king of the tax code. So we, I think I think that, that's already established that's here. Established. Okay, cool. So <laughs> for new business owners, right, mm -hmm. that are you know either starting businesses in 2024 or trying to get on at least on the right track for 2024, they want to get their finances in order. What are some starting out steps that you think new business owners need to do to get organized properly to even start saving taxes? Because we don't know where you are. We can't even help you save money. So like, what are some steps that people can like, I want to get my, my business finances in order, in order in 2024. What are some steps that you can give them? Absolutely. So the first thing that people need to do is they need to register their business. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. way too many businesses not registered. You need to register your business. Please don't ask me, oh, well, if I only made this amount. No, register your business, right? Mm -hmm. Register Please. your business. That's the first thing. The second thing is you need to think about um, in terms of organization, there needs to be some sort of bookkeeping in place. I don't care if you use an Excel spreadsheet. I don't care if, you know, you are utilizing a software you need to get organized, right? Keep, so that's mm -hmm. the first, that, that's like second thing. I find that people go in and they just start spending money. They don't know how much money they spend. Everybody know how much money they're making, right? Right. So let's be clear. Before all that, you got to make some money, mm, yeah, right? Please. And let, can we debunk the myth that if you don't make money, you don't need to be worried about saving on taxes? Because so many yeah. people are concerned about saving on taxes mm -hmm. that they don't have. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so just, right. Hey, give me the strategy on how to I write off. strategies on how to write Where this off. How, how, this how much, how much did you make? Well, income. you know, right now, I, I got a couple in the pipeline and like, bro, like, no. You haven't made a dollar yet? And just so y'all know, if you don't make a dollar in your business, there's no such thing as tax deductions, right? Yeah. You, If you don't make that first sale in your business, all those deductions are on hold until you make some money in your business. You have to make so money. you don't have a tax problem unless you have a money problem. Yes. If you ain't making no money, you don't get a money problem, okay? Yes. So. I love when you when you say that. Yeah. that Because it's so true. So yes, first, yes, you have to make some money. So let's mm -hmm. start over. You First, <laughs> make some money, mm -hmm. right? For yeah. new business owners, you have to make money. You have to figure out what that strategy is. You have to bring in income. The second thing you have to do is register your business. Mm -hmm. The third thing you have to do is figure out how are you go how you are going to organize it. Mm -hmm. And you also have to be aware of who you are as a person. So the reason why I'm like, George, I mm -hmm. need you to invest for me because yeah. I don't have the personality to invest. I see a little bit of gain, I'm taking it. If it's over 10%, <laughs> I'm taking it. Because the average of the market is eight, right? Yeah, so yeah, if right. I'm up 10 to 12, I'm beating the market, so I want my money. Right? So I would have never seen the 66% yeah, thing. Seen the I would have never seen it. Hey, so yeah. I need somebody to invest my money, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. But then that also goes, I'm a very high-level person. I think I I do the CEO thing. I am oh, amazing at 100%. it. Because I am high-level. I am not a detail person. I hate details. Mm -hmm. So all the little things, I just, I'm like, okay, this person needs to do this. This person needs to do that. I'm going to delegate it out. Mm -hmm. The details gives me a headache. Yeah. I'm going to push through. If I got to do it, I have to do it. Right. But it's just not where my zone of genius is. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, the first person I hired in my business was an admin. Gotcha. Right? So the first person, I said, all this answering email. Yeah. <laughs> Answering phones, like right. it takes me, me away from my zone of genius. So I think just having an understanding of, you know, like who you who you are mm -hmm. to then decide who you need to hire. Yeah. Right. And so then I think that you really have to understand tax strategy. And I think that people need to understand a difference between a tax preparer and a tax strategy. Talk about it. Right. Because. When you are a new business owner, mm -hmm. right, you may say, oh, my aunt was doing my taxes before, my uncle yeah. was doing my taxes before, I was doing my taxes <laughs> before on TurboTax right, right. or wherever, right? However, you don't know tax the tax code. Yeah. So you're already walking into it right. 
at a disadvantage mm -hmm. because you don't know what your options are. Right. And so when you, I always tell people the difference between a tax preparer and a tax mm -hmm. strategist is a tax preparer, you can find them January through April. April, they most likely mat, uh, specialize in W-2s. They mm -hmm. gonna, you know, they, mm -hmm. you got some kids, you got some, right. you know, th that's where their zone of genius is, right? right? They are a tax preparer. They don't have... <laughs> Any sort of All knowledge they're about the, your paperwork they're just taking it your paperwork and put it in the system, yeah. right? There's no right. strategy. The difference between a tax strategist is we're going to sit down, right? Carter and I, that's what we do. That's we are do. tax strategists, yeah. right? So we are going to approach taxes from a different angle of saying, mm -hmm. listen, we had you, you got how much money? What you need to do to minimize this so that mm -hmm. way you can keep more of your money, right? So those strategies could be hiring your kids, those strategies could be, um, Purchasing a Lambo, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's G wagon. A, a G wagon, <laughs> yeah, yes, Lambo, yes, G wagon. Yes. Okay. okay. Hey, yeah. Carter, you ain't you ain't let me just get that. I was just trying to keep the shine on you. No, no, no. <laughs> right back on you. Slow down, <laughs> slow down, Uncle Turbo. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to keep the shine on you. Yeah. But the G wagon that she never drives, by the way. Yeah. I Ten thousand miles that. in like four years is insane. Yeah, I got my car in twenty twenty one. Uh, well, my truck in 2021, and I literally have like 13,000 miles Insane. on it. But I don't drive that much. But you need you need the tax write off though. I needed the tax write off. Yeah. And I when I do drive, it's for business. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the new uh, law that might come out in in a little bit. Yes. But, but no. But to your to your point, right? And the, the the unique thing about it is most tax prepare most tax preparers don't do tax strategy, mm -hmm. and most tax strategists are not preparing taxes. Because mm -hmm. if if I spend 60 hours, 40, 50 hours a week doing preparation, I have no time to learn and study to be a strategist. Mm -hmm. And if right. I'm being a strategist my whole time, I don't see the point or see the return on investment of doing the actual preparation because I know I can mm -hmm. just advise you and save you more money and then mm -hmm. hire a on, a on board a preparer to do the work after the strategy is done. Absolutely. And that's yep. why Brooks Alliance is the best because we do both. Both. Hey. hey. Talk about it. Talk about <laughs> it. might say but both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it took, you know, it took a really long time. Like I just started in terms of like opening up tax strategies for a good amount of Brooks Alliance clients because mm -hmm. before it was very selective because yeah. of that exact thing. Mm -hmm. I cannot prepare strategies because to me it's it's, it's past just the strategy. Mm -hmm. If I tell you that you need to do something, I also, again, holding your hand. Provide I also need yeah. to provide you with the solution. And then you guys know, I need to follow up with you. Did yeah, you do it? They ain't do it? Did you do it? Yeah. Because your success is my success. Mm -hmm. I can't tell people that I help people save hundreds right. of millions of dollars in taxes if you don't implement right. what I told you that you need to do. And so people are more fascinated with the idea of what they can do mm -hmm. when it, as it relates to tax. Oh, I can write off a G wagon. Right, right. Oh, the, I the theory, can. Yeah. yeah, I can pay my kids. Some mm -hmm. people be like, Oh, I could pay my kids in my business. I know that I could do that. Can you make sure you write that off on my taxes? We're like, well, did you transfer any money? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I didn't do that. Right. Hire well, them, did you hire them? Yeah. Do they have a position? Uh, well, you know, uh, well they did do this. It's yeah. like, that's not enough. Yeah. Right. You know, like, that's not enough. So I think that um, people have to just be very um, just aware of, like, the, their new positions. And I always mm -hmm. say... Your old professionals may not serve you. Yeah. And you cannot be afraid to let them go. Right. We've had people call us like, can you please call my old tax preparer and like tell them that? <laughs> That's crazy. And tell them that we can't work with them anymore. Like, and I'm like, here's the thing I tell people. It's like, can't do that. if we did business, I paid you, you didn't do me a favor. Yeah. Right. So it's so it's like if the business is over, it's not, I mean, it's no, it's no love lost. Like I paid for a service, you provided that service. At any point in time, we could part ways. I have the ability that I did build multiple brands to, you know, eight figure businesses. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't have a personal brand, but it doesn't mean that I, I have to start from doing webinars or doing this influencer mm -hmm. thing. I don't have to do that. Not that I did too much of it. Cause I, I really, was, I wasn't salesy. I don't, I'm not a salesy guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I just do what I love and like I started the Mac pack and I really love, I love doing it. Like I go on every week and, and teach people about everything I know. And my goal is to literally everything I, I, I in my brain that I, I do in media, I want to teach people. I want to mm -hmm. teach every single thing I do. Um, and that's my goal. And I enjoy doing it. It's not like, um, you know, I'm, I mean, I don't even promote it. Like people just sign up, 
They see it in my episodes or my podcast or whatever. I just I just talk about it. You know, hey, you know, if you want to come to the Mac Pack, but I don't promote it really too much on social media. Mm -hmm. I just you know, um, maybe I might in, a, in the future, maybe I might not. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I just enjoy doing. It. I love doing it. Um, I love making content. I make a lot of content that I don't even put out. What I realize is that when I turn that camera on, I could talk about anything. I could talk about anything and it doesn't have to go out to the world. But what it does do, it takes this load off my, my chest or my shoulders and I release it into the camera. Mm -hmm. And it's become therapeutic for me. So that's why I enjoy making content at this point. So I'll probably never stop making content. I may stop putting it out mm -hmm. um, and just make just the Mac Pack content because I just love teaching people. I love helping people as much as I can. I've been helping people my whole life. And now I got my own little community and, you know, Shouldn't say that. My own huge yeah, community. I was, yeah. I, I was gonna cut you off. My you own huge community. Yeah, 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 yeah. That I get to inspire and help, mm -hmm. and we all, you know, work out, have like minded and build. We build together. Yeah. So what, what I love about you all is again, three brothers. Was more, I know it's a lot of people, but like three main focal brothers that came together and saw a bigger purpose mm -hmm. and set their ego aside to build something that that y'all could have built, that y'all built together that could have been bigger than anything y'all built on your own, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's led to you all to meet phenomenal people mm -hmm. um, in the journey. So my next question to you is, out of all of the phenomenal people you've met, who for you was like the best experience? And what was one of the best lessons that you learned from uh, one of the, you know, whether celebrities or, uh, Influencers or you know uh, whoever you all met, what That's was one of the best question. people and um and one of the best lessons that you that you all got from from Robert Smith to Steve Hart like to all these people right? Uh, yeah, I but like I don't I didn't really co communicate with like I mean I've had very vague conversations with Steve Harvey, I had vague conversations with uh Robert F Smith. Um, I mean it, it sucks to say, but not. No. Take that part out. Yeah. Edit that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to say his name. I'm not even say his name. Okay, okay. Okay. I mean, it's 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 so many, it's so many great people I met. So many great people mm -hmm. I met. Yeah. And it just depends. It's all timing. Like I may have he may have been, you know, inspir inspirational in my life, but he may have, you know, I hadn't had a better conversation with him. Yeah. So it was like it's so many different it was so many people. it's so many different people. Mm -hmm. I would hate to say just one person because it's just it's been so many different people that inspire me. I mean, it you know, so many people. Like it I couldn't pick one. Okay. I couldn't pick one. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um I mean, I could pick one from the beginning. Um Derek uh what's his last name? Episode 12, episode 12, I believe. Um, he he owned a store, but um, he owned a, 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 a sorry a restaurant, mm -hmm. um, and buttermilk I think it was called in Baltimore. And I just loved the way he uh, you know how he started from nothing. And this is like he was he was like one of the first inspirations from Ernie Lee's mm -hmm. path because he started from nothing, you know, came from nothing, and the way he like broke down his business. And mm -hmm. the finances and, and and how to grow and how to have the own the building and things like that was inspiring to me. Like you know, he's like, I'm not in the restaurant business. I'm in I'm in a the uh, real estate business. Mm -hmm. It's just I happen to have a restaurant. So it was like that was kind of like one of the one of the things that like that was one of those moments where I was like, oh, we got some dope shit. Yeah, we got some dope shit. Because what's interesting, at least from my take, you let me know if I'm, I'm wrong in this assumption. It seems like. The media business is like when y'all first started out. Like obviously, I mean, y'all probably were doing what y'all were doing, y'all own thing or whatever. But in the beginning, it's like okay, we built this platform that people can appreciate. But some of the guests y'all had on, like they might have had a bigger bag than y'all at the time, right? Y'all just had the bigger platform, mm -hmm. right? But the, but it's interesting to see almost like the the, the shift and evolution to where mm -hmm. that's still happening. I mean, oh yeah, 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 yeah definitely, still, definitely. Still. Still. <laughs> got Robert Smith on the show, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But like, but it, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But like to see like I just imagine like. There's a lot, probably a lot of aha moments where like, man, y'all remember we was just like, we had the show. We was kind of like all inspired by some of the people that we were bringing on. And now like our bag, you know, say our bag is just as deep, you know, to a degree. Obviously now y'all got all sorts of people. Bar Barbara Cochran, I think is her name. Mm -hmm. um, you have all sorts of people on the show. But I can imagine it seems like, at least from the outside looking in, it was like, y'all started the platform. Platform started to gain some recognition. People wanted to be on the platform to amplify their business. And then now it's like, either neck and neck or y'all are doing just as well from a financial standpoint than some of the big heavy hitters that y'all have on the show. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think the bag determines like 
uh, the success. So I don't want to say the bag. Um, but I will say, like, there's been people that taught us things, and we've actually taught them things, but you still have to humble yourself, right? For sure. Like, even if I, I start to interview with, with someone that I might be, I feel like that I'm, I'm, I might be on a higher level than them or something, I still got to humble because you can learn from anybody. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I learn from my son every day. You know what I'm saying? But you can learn from anybody. So I think no matter how success in terms of finances or in types of celebrity, mm -hmm. I think everyone should always be able to hum themselves and listen. Because if you can't listen and you're just always talking, always talk, doing the most talking in the room, then you're going to be one of those ones that never grow. You're going to stay stuck in that room, if that makes any sense. That makes sense. Makes perfect sense. One thousand. One thousand. So you, uh, we, we talked about... Um, you know, the future plans for your leisure. You talked about the future plans for you. Um, outside of focusing on your personal brand, what is a major goal for you in 2024? 2024. 2024. What? 2024. I mean, I have some goals. Just have to rearrange them. Um, I mean, I, I, I hit one of them. Wanted to get that nice house, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Wanted yeah. to get the nice car, but yeah. those are materialistic things. You know? yeah. I just want to be a great father. I want to be a great husband. Um, I just want to be. I want to be inspirational to all the people, all the people that's close to me. Yeah. Um, those. That's the thing that I'm. I'm shooting for now. Like those <laughs> materialistic things were really cool in the beginning, but it gets to a point that how much, how how many, like how much more things can you get? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it it becomes you know. Oh, you know, yeah. um, but I definitely want to uh, grow the um, the Mac Pack community. Mm -hmm. I want to grow Ewala University. Um, I want InvestFest to have the be the. I don't care about how many people we have, but I want I want every single person that comes to InvestFest. Yeah, I want them to say this is the most amazing conference festival mm -hmm. experience I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, uh, and I mean that's really it. like my personal goals, like. I'm not really a selfish type of dude. I'll be trying to be selfish and just talk, think about me. <laughs> yeah. It's just not in me. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, I'm always for the whole team. I'm a team player. Yeah, right. That's how Earn Your Leisure works, right? Like, yeah. everyone I mean, has to, a place for to For you to do. have been behind the scenes for that long, but I don't know how many men mm -hmm. with our egos would have been be okay being behind the scenes of something this epic for that long. And, and you saw the bigger picture. You didn't, I'm sure you didn't do, just, just do it because you didn't want to. It was like, sure. I know at, in this season, I need to take the step back so I can focus on other things. And that, dude, I know that took a lot. Like, Well, everyone got a part to play, right? Like, mm -hmm. I prefer to be behind the scenes. Even to this day, I prefer to be behind the scenes, you know? Um, but again, it goes back to you don't have control of your destiny, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as people grow, like, you know, Troy and Rashad, they're just not like just my friends. They're celebrities now, right? Mm -hmm. um, who knows the future for them, right? Like, how much longer can they do what they're doing, right, on this level, right? I don't know. I don't want to have – I don't want to hold them accountable to take me with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not a celebrity. They're celebrities. So they they could they could literally say, oh, man, we're, we're, we're done. We're going over here, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd be damned if I let somebody control my destiny, you know what I'm saying? And I got to start all over again, right? So instead of me, you know, worrying about anyone else outside of me, I got to focus on just building things in place, businesses and uh, properties and mm -hmm. things like that to make sure that I'm good because I have I, I, I became accustomed to a certain lifestyle and I'd be damned if I, you know, we <laughs> talked about earned. this, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I'm not trying to go back, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So um, mm -hmm. so I just I just had to had to rearrange certain things and I like I try this, I try this, I try it because I'm trying like what I I, I want to be true to myself. But I also want to be able to make a, a, a decent amount of income to to survive in the worst case scenario. You have to trade your time. Yeah. Trading your time for money is a poor man's game, right? It's what we've been taught to do our entire lives. It's about half of America. It's almost you know. as a poor man's game. Yeah. I would just say that there's more hyper-efficient ways to make money. Yeah. Right. Because, because, it could, because if it's a poor man's game, then... People that work with us, right? Then we're basically calling them poor. Yeah, which yeah, they're not yeah. poor, right? Yeah. Trading your time for money solely, I think, is it just a, not 
a great way to get to financial freedom. It's somewhere that most people need to start. Right. right. But we want you getting from there to being able to like have your time because again, uh, poor people trade their time for money and rich people trade their money for their time. Right. right. So, so like eventually you'll get, you, you, you get to, you get to that place. But the, 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 the cons is you have to trade your time and we only have 24 hours in a day. So that means even if you were selling uh, your product and it takes you, you know, four hours a day to produce, you only can, sell so many because like mm. you only have 24 hours in a day right so um the cons about service-based businesses is, is that you only can give so many hours and when you talk about scaling to to the, to the highest level you just won't be able to do that yeah um one thing that you can do if you really just love the service-based business model i'll, I'll, I'll tell people all, all the time just because you walk into charles swab don't mean you're gonna talk to charles right so yeah. it's like if you can create a business model where you can create the standard operating procedures, you can put the right manpower in place, right? You can still own a service-based business, right? To where you now you're not you're not having to trade all the time mm-hmm. yourself, right? So like it just depends upon the path you want to take. But the concept is this: whatever you do, whether it's digital products or the next business model we're gonna, we're gonna talk about, how can I build something where the I can remove myself as the person who's trading all the time? Mm-hmm. Right? That's the concept. Whether you do a, a digital products or whether you do this or the next business model we're going to talk about, that's not as important. It's like whatever I'm doing, how can I own it instead of running it? Facts. Right. And so now let's get into the third business model, which we are currently deeply immersed in. Yep. Um, we're which, deeply immersed in all of them. Yeah, yeah. I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, even member a membership is low ticket. So we yeah. have, we get, we're getting a little bit all. Yeah, yeah. Te- technically, we have, we'd have we get, all oh, we get a little yeah. bit. Like, yeah. like, leave it with leave something. Leave it with something. <laughs> Need that scratch. Shout yeah. out to Wallow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So uh, this is the one that's probably the most scalable. Yep. Right. Because you still get the perceived connection of like, oh, I get access to this person, but in a more scalable way because it's like the whole barbershop barber analogy, right? If when I was a barber, I could only cut so many heads in a day, mm-hmm. right? If I own the barber shop, then there's several people cutting heads, right? And I just own the barber shop. With a coaching model, coaching business model, you can coach 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 people Thousand. at one time, thousands mm-hmm. at one time with that same hour, mm-hmm. right? So you're scaling your time. So we're still you're still leveraging your time to a degree, but you're scaling it because you can serve so many people at one time. Right. So if you are an attorney or whatever it is that you do, instead of consulting on a one to one basis, what would it look like to teach it at scale so that you can talk to 50 people at one time with that same hour? Yeah, man. And like with the high ticket coaching model, which I absolutely love, it is ex- ex- extremely highly profitable. Right. And you're helping people at the same time and you can find ways on how to make money off the people that you're coaching by, by without any further, um, any further uh, use of your time, and I'll explain in a moment. But like, I think the the the, the pullback that people have with high ticket coaching is like, who am I to charge, to charge somebody ten thousand right. dollars to work with me? Right, right. And you have to you have to ask yourself this: like, what receipts have you produced? Mm-hmm. If you're making two hundred thousand dollars. As an attorney in your in your in your attorney business, like if you can teach somebody how to make half of that, right? You just have them make a hundred thousand dollars, and you mm-hmm. only charge them ten. They mm-hmm. got a ten thousand dollar return. I mean, they got a ninety thousand dollar return on investment for work, which is a ten x return, right? right? So, like, I think people have to like really look at their receipts and understand, like, 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 like. If you have the results and you res- prove them for yourself, you can probably prove them for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, we pay uh, a college professor mm-hmm. forty thousand dollars who hasn't done it. Like right. the professor only teaches. Like my professor only taught about taxes and audit. He never worked as an auditor. He never right. worked the tax advisor. He was just a, a professor for twenty years. Right, hadn't did the work, but I have to pay him forty thousand dollars or whatever the cost of his class was. To learn from him mm-hmm. off theory. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I I I just want more people to give themselves credit. Mm-hmm. If you have the results, you can get into the high ticket coaching. Now, if you haven't had the results, then please take a seat. Please have a seat, Sit relax. Your ass. <laughs> Sit on the sidelines. Yeah, but again, it, the thing is all about positioning, right? Like people are so used to charging for their time mm-hmm. and they're so used to like itemizing things, right? So here's the one of the things I did in my service-based business early. Before I even got good at positioning, it just made logical sense, right? So if someone's like, when you tell them the cost, it's like, oh, well, 
what if I don't like, how can, can I get it for less? Then I would break out all the things I'm going to do. And I would say, well, let me know from this list what you want me to remove, right? What result don't you want? They mm -hmm. want all of them, right? So you have to charge from a place of value and outcome. And to Carter's point, if I'm saying the outcome is I'm going to help you five extra return, I mean, five extra income or whatever it might be, then you are just simply charging a fraction of the, res of the result that they'll be able to leverage in perpetuity, right? Even after the coaching program. So there's this story about a person who had a million dollar tax problem and they couldn't figure it out. And they finally went to Ernst & Young and Ernst & Young said, I got good news. I can make your million dollar tax problem go away. It's going to cost you half a million dollars though, Yeah. right? They just saved that person $500,000. You were about you had the check written to the IRS. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter that I'm charging you half a million because I just saved you half a million. Mm -hmm. But people don't aren't like they don't have the uh, the mind frame to position things that way. It's like, oh my gosh, I couldn't fathom charging somebody that much money. Yeah. Right. But I charge one of my clients the first, within the 90 days of working with me, I'm not even the tax guy. Yeah. I saved her over six hundred thousand dollars in taxes. Right? In the in the within 90 days. Yeah. And my service is a fraction of that. So you think she has any issue? Paying that fee year over year? Yeah. No. He might, as well, he might as well go ahead and pay me a couple years in advance. Yeah, with that. Couple, exactly. <laughs> that scratch. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. But it comes back to you knowing your value, actually having quantifiable results, because if you don't, it will be hard. Yeah. Right? It will be hard to charge somebody a lot of money if you don't have any receipts of your own or for other people where you're like, okay, look, this fee is dropping a bucket if I'm going to save you 50 grand in taxes. Yeah. Right? But if you don't have that, it's very hard to do. Yeah, which is why, like, start a service-based business first. You know, get get the results for yourself. Like like if if you don't have a testimony, you are the testimony. Right. I took myself from making no money in my in my service based businesses to making a quarter million dollars in my service based business. I now teach other accountants how to scale from zero to a quarter million. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I might only I might charge, you know, ten thousand dollars for that. You get twenty five x return on your investment. And then when I go from zero to well, I go from a quarter million to a million, I now can say I'm gonna teach you how to. Uh, scale your accounting business to a million dollars using a coaching program because like now I've done it and the dope thing about experience this is why like being an entrepreneur is so fucking dope because the more results you get the more things you learn right. you can just turn around and teach it to somebody else because you just did it right like we just we was at ClickFunnels we were watching Russell Brunson show us how he's gonna make a hundred million dollars in a brand new business he's starting mm -hmm. right and like He's going through the business and showing us the way. And how to offer at the end and of the like, session. And I'm going to teach you how to do this because I'm doing it right now. It's going to cost this amount of money. I'm like, that's actually a good offer. Like, right. Because like, as an entrepreneur, the more you, uh, the more you heighten your skills, mm -hmm. the more you develop yourself, the mm -hmm. more results you get, mm -hmm. you can turn, turn around and teach the next person. And then when you teach somebody else, you're actually reteaching yourself. So you're getting better as well. Right. So you're getting paid large sums of money to help people, but to also help yourself. 100%. Because if you can't, if you can't teach it, you haven't mastered it. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't mastered it, you shouldn't teach it. That part. Right? So teaching really helps you refine the way that you do it. Because now I get to the point where, like, I'll start teaching something. I'm like, man, it's, it gets better. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But now I'm just doing things add, organically, add adding this, yeah. adding this sauce, tweaking the recipe, right? Um, and, and while we're here, let's talk about the four levels of learning because I think it's very important because this is, I think, what helped us get to the level that we're at, right? Okay. So the first level of learning is uh, it, unconscious incompetence, right? Meaning you don't know what you don't know. So when you go to ClickFunnels for the first time, you didn't know that this business model existed. You didn't know it was possible. You just didn't know, right? Like you didn't know what you didn't know. The second level of learning is conscious incompetence. Now you're aware. Like, oh, shoot, I am now aware that I didn't know all these wonderful things, but now you got to do something about it, right? Because yeah. you are, you know, you don't know it, but you know that it's possible, right? Right. Then you have conscious competence, right? You know what you're doing, right? You know how it's done, right? It's on, it's it's, it's on your radar, right? That's just that's kind of like the the level that the base level that everybody needs to get to. But where I think we're at now in some of the, our skill sets is unconscious competence, meaning you've been doing this for so long and you're so immersed in what you do. Like if somebody, if somebody ever asked you something, they're like, bro, how'd you know that? I'd be like, I don't, I don't even know where that came from. That just, yeah. it just came out of me, right? Mm -hmm. But the truth is, it's because you're so committed to personal development. You're so committed to being great that you are just downloading all these things in you and then it can come out at any given time because of how much immersed you are in personal development. So I think it's very important for you to know where you are in that spectrum. Mm -hmm. I think if you're watching this episode, a lot of you are now consciously incompetent, 
right? Like I didn't know about these three business models. I didn't know this is the way to start. Mm -hmm. But now you got opportunity to do something about it. Yeah, facts. And like, so here's what we want you all to do. We want you to, out of all the business models that we talked about, pick one mm -hmm. and go all in on it. Is it the service-based business, right? Because you already have a service-based business and now you just need to figure out how to go from where you're at to making more money. Is it the low ticket offer that you now have a service based business and now you want to create the ebook teaching people the five steps to get to wherever you're at, mm -hmm. right? And you have an audience, so you're going to be able to scale that quickly. Or do you want to go from service to high ticket coaching, which is again a super profitable business, but don't go into that business until you have some receipts for yourself because, you know, like we talk about the reach of the week, right? Like, like I, I, I know people and yeah. I won't say any names. Yeah. I know people. Who, who like on their website. Nah, say them names. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I know if you're on the website, like, man, I help X, Y, and Z scale to $15,000 a month, right? $20,000 a month. Bro, I just talked to you last month and you trying to get to 10. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 right. like how you like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who, right, 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 who right. screenshots are you using, fam? <laughs> Like, hey, and let me borrow that screenshot. No, you can't borrow can, can I? Oh, that's that's correct. Borrow the screenshot. Is somebody, crazy. somebody has asked me. That is hey, sick man, work. Can I? Can I? Can I get one of your stripe screenshots? Borrowing the screenshot is it's, crazy. Yes. Yes. Wow. He wants me to forget. I was gonna say, <laughs> um, that is sick work. Um, damn. It was. It was good too. What was I gonna say? Uh, we talking about receipts, results. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that threw bro, you. <laughs> that somebody threw literally asked me. I was showing them like the results. I'm like, hey man, can you screenshot that? Send it to me. Yeah. It's like, but you for what? <laughs> what you gonna do with it? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I, I just I just want that. I, mean, I, I, I just need that man because I want to show my students that. I'm like, bro, what you, you want to show your students? I'm like, bro, nah. Send man. it, send them to my, send it to my <laughs> website. <laughs> I'm like, nah, bro. You ain't finna do that because again, y'all, like, we we want to we want to be like extremely authentic, and we want to be like really we want to have uh, integrity in these right. businesses, Huge. right? Right. Because um. It's, it is, you set yourself up for failure because it's if you can't do it for yourself, it's impossible to help somebody else. Get right, people right. always talk about imposter syndrome. and like, It's like, because you're, the, you're an imposter, bro. You're an bro. imposter, right? Like, <laughs> you're, you're, the confidence, so people say, why are you so confident on stage when you speak? Because I turned down everything that doesn't align with what I'm actually good at. Yeah. Right, and this stuff that I can speak of, I've made probably multi six. Like, I never teach about e-commerce in terms of, like, selling merchandise. Mm -hmm. And I've done it better than most of the people that teach e-commerce. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Sometimes it's like you don't just because you you know something you don't have to teach if you if you don't plan to mat I don't want to master e-commerce yeah, right I, I don't want to go an inch deep in a mile wide right for what you yeah. know what I'm saying matter of fact we for the people that want to do the service based business right we actually or coaching yeah. we actually did an episode on how to charge your worth right or like the what the different components mm. let's play a game I'm gonna guess what the episode number is we both are mm. and whoever's closest we got to give. You gotta get the the loser has to give. Yeah, I always get some money out of me, y'all. Yeah, I swear. yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, uh, I'm you know, stop losing, and then I won't be taking it out of you, right? But the loser has to do something. What, are, what does the loser have to do? The loser has to I don't know, give somebody like the best comment on. The loser has to give the best comment on this episode, a hundred dollars. Um, hundred dollar gift card to the store. Yeah. Okay. I'll cool. do that. I'll do that. We'll do that. So, yeah. uh, what at what what is your best guess on what the episode number you was? Must, you must have like I don't know. No, I don't know. I'm no, just, he's a scammer, y'all. I don't <laughs> <laughs> calling calling me a scammer is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I don't I don't know. I'm just uh, a big educated guess. I, I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you this. It was a virtual episode. I know. I know. I know where I was. I know where I was actually sitting when we recorded the episode. Um, I was in Dallas at my cousin's house. So let me think. Um, oh, then you got you got something on me. Yo, you you gonna know the number though. You gotta know the number. What episode right? are we on right now? Ew. Like hundred and something, hundred and nine or something, something like that. Okay, I would say like sixty-one. Sixty-one. Damn, you think you did forty from? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. I was early. in a suit. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go seventy-four. Okay. You said sixty what? Sixty-one. I'm gonna so go seventy-four. We'll look it up after this after this episode. Right? Yep. And somebody get hundred dollars if you got a good comment. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so those are the three different business models. Pick yeah, one. Pick one. Pick one, one, man. Yeah, pick please. Pick one. Do one thing good first. Right, because that's I'm what we did. We're, we're, we're doing all uh, of them now, but we started with one. Started with the service. I, so this is what we tell them the order we did. Yeah, yeah. We started with the service. Yep. Ran up the service to multiple six figures. Right. Then, um, created a low ticket product because yep. we didn't know the digital product space like that. We just like, right. I'm going to get in there. People buy this $30 thing. Right. I'm like, oh, and then we had audiences. So it was mm -hmm. like, oh, people are really buying this stuff. Right. 
And then um, we went to some masterminds and we learned about high. T- we we mm-hmm. paid for high ticket coaching right. first of all. That's a bar. We paid for high ticket. It's coaching. easier to charge when you pay when you pay it. Pay Don't it yourself. get me started, bro. This episode ain't gonna end if you get me started on that. <laughs> um, and then we paid for high ticket coaches. Then we learned how to build high ticket coaching programs. And then we just scaled up the price of our t- high ticket program based off the results our students were getting. Big fact. So so get in now because <laughs> so, yeah, look because what 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 would the great philosopher once say? Yesterday's price is not is not today's, today's price. price. And with that being said, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Melanin Money Show. We'll see you next time. Peace.